All right, guys, welcome back to another Mommy and Me episode. If you are new here, I am Brie Renee, straight from there. And I'm the original Miss Renee, from the A. <laughs> anyway, shout out to everybody that's listening. Um, either If you're on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to your audio platforms for podcasts, we are on there. You can catch the audio versions on Sundays. And of course, shout out to everybody that's watching us on YouTube, where you can catch the visual part of the podcast dropping every Monday. And shout out to everybody that never miss a mommy and me Monday. You know what I'm saying? Everybody that's been rocking with us since the first week. We love all of y'all. Thank y'all for subscribing and sharing and liking our content. Continue to spread the love. We need that. Okay, well, today is another very special episode. I have another amazing wife, mom, one of my good, good girlfriends, entrepreneur. She just wears so many hats. <laughs> but my girl, Chi Chi, a.k.a. Leticia Imperia Gardner, <laughs> and her beautiful daughter, who is like my honorary niece. Okay, well, thank <laughs> you. Like, what if you want to? <laughs> Naasia, y'all. Yes. Hey, welcome. <laughs> yeah. And it's a special because it's our first mother and daughter duo. Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah. So it's the first mommy and me outside of mommy and me. Period. So we excited to have y'all. Welcome. And look, y'all well, really do come in all different shades. Oh, we yeah. really do. Absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful shades of That's black. Right. That's right. Beautiful shades of black. No, but speaking of that, like, let's talk about that because I was just saying before we started filming, like, what I love is that y'all look just alike. Like, yeah. that's your face on Niaja. Um, yeah. but, but it's like, she's uh, a little bit darker and you're lighter. And then it's like, I look just like my mama. It's literally her face on me, but I'm just the lighter yeah. one. But I know we talked about it in the past about, like, some of the struggles we had within our relationship and with other people when we were when I was growing up, mm -hmm. like people said crazy things to her, like, oh, you must be the help. Like, or who child right. are you babysitting? 100%. Just ignorant like 100%. stigmas. And of, nothing has changed since then. No. I colorism. still get it. All so the like time. what did y'all or how did that that affect or how did y'all deal with colorism while I, you were I feel like up? I still get it all the time. You know, yeah. I'm from Jersey, so I it's super diverse. We've got every nationality you can think of. But when I moved to the South with her, people would say things. I mean, even in the checkout line at the grocery store, like, oh, her father must be really dark. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, why is that the first thing you're thinking about? Right. Yeah. Or are you the mom, like the biological mom? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. yeah. But it's always, you know, it's it's my blow on. But I'd be like, yeah, that's me. Has All that the way. ever affected you, though, Naisha? Because I know, like, even with me being younger, I used to feel like, dang, why I don't look like you? Like, mm -hmm. I wish I used to wish I was darker. Cause I felt like okay, maybe everybody else in my family was darker, so it would make me blend in or feel more. Yeah, did you ever feel anything like that? Um, for the most part, I'm actually my sister and I are the darkest of our cousins, so it did feel a little weird. And then outside of that, people used to be like, "Oh, your stepdad's your real dad. That's not your mom." But like I'm like, that's not that's not how it works. Right. So I'm like, that's, <laughs> that's my mom. I came from her, you know. But for mm -hmm. the most part, it was more like the beauty standards. Like, I wanted to be light-skinned because my mom was light-skinned. So it was about the reverse for yeah. her. Yeah. So yeah. What, like, how did you get through there? Or when did you start to realize, like... The world oh, don't matter. It doesn't right. either. The color... What did you realize? Because it might have been color didn't matter. Or you might have realized, like, oh, wow, I'm gorgeous. Period. Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, wow, we do look just alike. Like, what part... When did it click for you? Like, what clicked? I think it was more so when Black Beauty started trending. It became more open in the world. Everybody so was like, recently. yeah. So, and then she's always giving me affirmations every day, making sure I felt beautiful about myself. And she always took like the self-care days and I always felt good afterward. She, yeah. she taught me how I love myself. So it was more so like just putting that energy and effort into myself with her. It's, it's what made me like realize. Because if anybody gonna self care, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna right. <laughs> Her third and, day. And you know what? That is so important, Chi Chi. Yeah. That I wish if 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 mothers don't hear anything else from this podcast, to realize how important it is to pour into your daughters, make them realize and understand that they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. Give them those self affirmations so they'll know that hey, you know they can feel good about themselves just where they are. Yeah. Their color. You know, the tone, the skin tone doesn't matter. They're yeah. beautiful. Black is beautiful. Yeah. So I think that's important. I hope I hope every mother out there listening and take black that away. And black is so unique and diverse. Like, so it's diverse. It's really four different shades here. Like, it's not one definition. Right. It's not one, one anything. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I was out eating last night and my screensaver is my kids 
right? My daughters. And um, I was w- out with another girl. She's Puerto Rican, but she's brown skin. Mm-hmm. You know, so in the South, she just looks black, right? Mm-hmm. Even though Puerto Rican is black. But anyway. Right. But um, <laughs> but there was a kid next to us and his dad was trying to school him. He was a young boy. And he said something like they were talking about women and dating. And he was like, he said something about, well, girls like y'all. And I was like, girls like who? I said, I'm black. And he was like, well, she looked black, but you don't look black. And I'm like, it's just crazy because even in kids, yeah. he was 12. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That they create this. But I'm glad society has changed the beauty standards. You do see more. Yeah. You celebration know, of, celebration like different of black women in and different shades. shades. Yeah. Right. Hair texture. I think that's important because like you said, growing up, we didn't really have it. No. And I think it was tough because even earlier on, I felt like she dealt with that. Um, because like even when it comes to the swimming pool, it was like, oh, I don't want to be outside. I don't get too dark. And I'd yeah. be like, no, yeah, get, yeah, you nothing's know. wrong with getting dark. You know right. what I'm saying? But yeah. it would irk me when I would go to the pool with certain people because I've been around other light skinned women whose kids are like, oh, don't get outside. You're going to turn black. Like, why would like, you say yeah, that? It's contagious. Yeah. Like, it's a, it's, like, it's, you know it's, what I'm it's saying? Bad, so it's I bad. would get offended. I would check moms like that. Well, that's how you're raising yours. Keep that over there. Don't say that out loud or around mine. Because mm-hmm. I feel like it does create a like, well, what's Stigma. wrong with that? With that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, so it's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know um, on our podcast, we talk a lot about about the growing up, the struggle mm-hmm. of like that mom and daughter relationship. We actually just, we had a realization um, last episode that we didn't start working on our relationship or actually start liking each other. I was going to say <laughs> that I heard that. Yeah, <laughs> until I was like mid-20s. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I, for me, yeah. I was saying it clicked for me when I realized like, oh, wow, a lot of the stuff she said was kind of <laughs> right. right. <laughs> or, or, or like, or even when I was in college and I realized like a lot of the things I took for granted or I thought were normal were privileges Mm -hmm. that I didn't even realize my other friends lacked because their mother might have been working or didn't have resources or, you know, so it was like hearing and having that full circle moment. I think she's been realizing that lately. Yeah, I was going to say, like, how is it? Because now you're 18. Mm -hmm. Woo! I was about to say fresh out the house, but really, no, it's like, no. you're not even out here. In the <laughs> but like, how how do you, and you can be honest. You can be honest. Tell me the truth, because I'm going to defend you, okay. okay? How you really feel about like this stage or phase of y'all relationship? Like, what is it like? Because I can't even remember like 18. It, it was like, hard for me. Right. We didn't ask you. We got a whole story in a minute. <laughs> no, um, I think... Right now, our season is really good. I feel like the past two seasons were like, <laughs> yeah, 17 was probably the <laughs> hardest. Yes. Okay. Yes. It was just my junior year, but I think going into my senior year, like everything was cool. I can be really in a good spot now. Like I can just be like, mommy, let's go out. Or I'm tired. Like I'll, I'll take her out working. You're like, real politically correct right now because we oh. threw hands on you like that. That's <laughs> <no>. <laughs> And you're like, no, everything's good. Okay. Like, that's the best. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> but, like, I don't even care because I just be like, it, it just be moments. And I just be like, I got to look past it. Yeah. I know I be in the back of my head. I can't stand, like. So, you don't yeah. like me? It's hey, it's she moment. told me one it's time. Moment. She was like, she looked at me one time and was like, if we were in high school, me and you wouldn't have been friends. Yeah. And I was like, you're right. <laughs> it was right. 100%. I told her. Because, for one, we didn't have, we don't got the same interests, like real for real. No, mm-hmm. and we come from two different worlds. I used to try yeah. to explain to her, even with, you know, I'm from the streets. I grew up a lot more humbly than she did. So it's like you a little girl I looked at from the suburbs who wanted to hang in the hood. Like, why are you acting like that? Hello. I don't Thank act you. like that. I mean, act like you that, know, but it was like a girl, you you didn't understand me because I'm looking at you like, what you complaining about? What right. are you talking um. about? I get you know what I'm saying? It. I and get it. It's I get like it. all these other like emotions and, and problems. And I'd be like, are you hungry? Are you, <laughs> do you not have clothes on your back? Thank you. You got Thank more you. than most of the people around you. Thank you. Focus you. on everything else. It was like, oh, I don't like you and hang out with you either. Well, because in life, it doesn't matter if people think that the only problems you can have are financial problems. Yeah. Or, or, you know, so it's like. Not really, but. It's some real things to cry about. Right. Everything. Hey, you ain't got to cry so about. You right. don't quantify somebody else's emotions. I'm just saying, as a parent, like I said, she's a Pisces and I'm a Virgo. I actually looked this up. And not that I know a whole bunch about signs or anything. <laughs> but, but she like, did I her research about that. It's toxic. 
because she's more sensitive, and, you know, with her feelings. And I'm more direct and to the point. Blunt. And it's kind of like, it's me. And I'm like, nah, it's just what it is. Like, mm-hmm. don't talk me around the bush. Get straight to the point. Don't, hey, when you really want something, <laughs> just say it. Yeah. Like, because to me, it seems like you're full of it. Or you trying to play me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ain't that crazy. <laughs> I done been there. You but, know what? And it's but we're good. just it's re- with our emotions. It's refreshing yeah. to know that while you may be 30 years to my junior, mm-hmm. you still having to deal with the same bullshit 100%. that I de- that I <laughs> dealt with when, when she was coming up. Yeah. You know, and so I will tell you that there is hope. There's hope. There's hope. I was telling Naeza that before. I yeah. Said, Girl, you know, I went through that phase where I couldn't stand them, but now we cool, so it's hope. There yeah. is hope. There's, so there mothers is hope. and daughters. Yep, there it's is hope. hope. It's hope. It's hope. It's hope. It may, it may be a little while. No, yeah, it might. Like I said, we literally did not. I wouldn't say we started building this friendship until 26. 26? That's... I mean, we never lost. <laughs> we never weren't talking. Right, right, It right, was right. never like. But well, not till where you've just kind of. Yeah, where I, cons- where I considered her my friend or where I see, wanted I, to hear her opinion. So me. I see it like this, like, because I feel like friendships, you know, they come and go. Girlfriends, they come and go. But your mother, you only have one. For sure. So at the end of the day, I want to be able to have an open relationship. I want you to come to me about any and everything. But I still think there has to be boundaries and a lot of respect mm. that has to be there. So. <laughs> How you talk or whatever you do, still got to look a little different. You know she what I'm just saying? don't have somebody <laughs> singing her song, okay? What do those so, boundaries look like, though? Because I know for her, she was like, I'm not your little friend. I'm the big one. Period. It, it's only one of them. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be replaced. Thank you. It's just one of me. But Thank you. And I, like? and I trumped them all. But my Period. It's like, okay, so while I know I don't have kids yet, so uh-huh. my song, my tune probably is going to change. For sure. But speaking from like the older daughter perspective, looking back, I wish she had been more of my friend. What does that look like though? I think more open communication. Like you would be understanding or just more maybe sensitive. <laughs> maybe <laughs> sensitive with my feelings, but just having more conversations. That I, I feel like I learned a lot of like dating and boys and things that might have seemed like uncomfortable for her as a mother to talk to me about. Yeah. I feel like I would have got the real or the better advice from her versus my friends who we all don't right. know and we yeah. figuring it I out. I talk to her about that type of stuff. She talks to me about okay. boys and stuff like that. We do hmm. that. You know, I, I've never told them like, don't do that or whatever the case may be. It just may not be appropriate for the age that you are. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I feel like we are decently open. Yeah. I know there's a lot she don't tell me because the way I've had to find out some things they ain't been from her mouth, you know, <laughs> sneaking Oops. going through her phone, whatever, we'll leave that Hello. Alone. But uh, no um, privacy. But I feel right. like to me, the open communication is important. But to me, one of the boundaries would be like, I know when she probably with her friends, she probably cursing up a storm. <laughs> I'm sure she is. I'm sure she talks. Really only, only when I'm singing a song. It whatever. <laughs> because she's done it in conversation with me where she slip up and be like, I'd be like, oh no, you said that too natural. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even and it wasn't even that big. I don't big. want her to curse. I don't want her to curse when she's speaking to me. I want her to yeah. talk. Like, yeah, like that. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's about that's what I would say. That's one of your boundaries. But it wasn't even a big word. It doesn't right? matter. <laughs> I know you curse when you're not around me. And I know you've been doing this since like middle school. <laughs> you know, and what, what, one thing for me is that kids got to understand that we can't be friend and mama at the same 100%. time. Yeah. Because, because if I was a little y'all. friend, huh? It confused y'all. And it um, confused us. It confused uh, the hell out of y'all. Because, <laughs> because, <laughs> because y'all think that you can get sideways and uh-huh. again say things and mm. think I'm supposed to, you can kiki and kai kai with me about things that, yeah. you know, may be cool for you, but it ain't cool for me. Right. So, you know, it's difficult. That I don't, and I, I'm going to say this. I'm going to step out of limb and say, until you are past puberty, we ain't gonna never be your little friend mm-hmm. because they're boundaries, they're rules, and y'all. Well, a lot of times, kind of early. So you mean like high school? Puberty is like 13. I right? say past. Yeah. I, I'm, well, let I'm me say like high school. No, young adolescents. Let's just say that you. We're gonna never be friends until you are. Grown, grown, Legal and drinking. and you're on your own, and and you know y- you've experienced some things in life. I, I was gonna say. ask y'all that. So, like, what age or when do you give your child real freedom, and what does that freedom look like? Is it is it at eighteen? I can answer that. One. Is it yeah. out when when you're out the house? Bingo. Is it when you're financially free? Like, what does 
Because I was out the house, but I was in college and you still was in my business. Yeah, because, <laughs> because, 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 be, because you were not financially independent. That's what I'm saying. So as a parent, so when did you me, decide that freedom? For me, it's when you became financially independent. That way you could make your own decisions. You were grown. The decision at that time I had to respect because I didn't have to pay for them. 100%. Mm. Go ahead, when guys. Is, what you want to say? Oh, yeah. When you're out of the house, their biggest thing right now is when you get out of our house, yeah. you can do whatever you want because you're not coming home. We got into it not too long ago about curfew and stuff like that because huh. I feel like it doesn't matter if you're 18 and you graduated high school. When you're in my house, adulting has nothing to do with birthdays. Right. Adulting has to do with actions, taking care of your business, mm -hmm. handling your business. You know what I'm saying? If you knew how to adult, I 100% believe you wouldn't be arguing with us about what time you got to be in this house. Right. Or when you got to check in. When you're able to do that and it's not on my tab, then it just ain't it. Right now, I, mean, I feel like if I let you come and go whenever you want, then you have no... You don't have no urgency to get out there on your own and be an adult. Why would you? Right. It's high. Who want to be outside? Right. I'm right. my house with Brit Free. I got food here. I can come and go as I want here. I ain't got to pay no bills here. So, yeah. I'm going to chill here. I'm going to chill. Yeah. She's so, like, that's not. Nobody feel like that. No, I, <laughs> no, I still want to be able to move out. Yeah. I agree. Right. right. But you can't until you. Pay until I'm it. financially stable. Exactly. Yeah, but she's saying even if you didn't give me a curfew, I still wouldn't want to live. Yeah, there. I think I, the whole conversation was with the curfew. I'm not going to come home in no crazy time. 12 was the, the lenient time for me, so I have time to get She home. wanted a two hour window. A two? Because a two hour window because I might be late. Who what kind of cast give you a two hour window? <laughs> she can't no, do this. All my friends are skating down there. Let me let me say this. She she was in college and stumbled in my house one night past my curfew, and I wasn't having it. Okay, <laughs> so like last time I, I was get able you. To come home. <laughs> I get you. I get you. Yeah. I get you. But I got one question for you. Yes, ma'am. Do you have a get out of hell fund? Do I have a what? I'm sorry. I, so she do you have me. do do you have a get out of hell fund? Are you saving up to leave your mother's home? <laughs> Right now, I'm dead broke. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there before. I she like, is working. Uh, She's investing in herself right now. We are. She just opened up her own salon suite. So oh, she's taking her eye So she's going into the field of entrepreneurship. Yeah. We are setting her up, getting everything still decorated and put together so that she can be her own boss. Mm -hmm. and yeah. In this industry, she can make a lot. And yeah. if she does right for the next, you know, yeah, she'd be able to get out there and do her own thing with plenty saved up. One, you got wonderful. a car paid for. Right. See, now you got a late start because I was saving up to get out of my mama house at 16. <laughs> it was, that's what she's talking about. I literally had the Hawaiian punch jar. I decorated <laughs> it and it said, get out of hell. Uh -oh. Oh. So it was literally like when all her friends would come she over. She liked to be at the beauty supply store too much. Oh, yeah. She liked she to wanna change her hair too much in DoorDash. When, yeah. I, when I was out of town. And um, we got into when I got back because she had money saved up. When I went through her spending, it was all over. It wasn't number four dash and beauty supply store. <laughs> Listen, this is crazy. Yeah. I was not the beauty supply store like that. You spend so, oh, you got with your hair and nails. Oh, no, because I got my hair done before. Remember, I had the passion twist that. Either way, that's what was that's what's eating up her well, money. The beauty, she, the, that's she what, what, the beauty and the food. But what that my, sound like? What do you spend money on outside? It was my it was homecoming and, season, and I was expensive. I was planning on running, but you know they were gone, so I I dropped out the race. Then I you know I had already paid for some of my supplies. So I, I thought you were posters. dropped out because you couldn't run for prom queen and homecoming queen at the same time. That's if I won homecoming queen, but I was still gonna run. I already had my posters together, and I just you know. Okay, but well, what do you spend your money on? You deflect. Food. Beauty and food. Beauty but and food. I don't blame you because I you're Chi Chi's too. daughter. Yeah. <laughs> like, but beauty yeah. and food. That's on my whole food. girl. That Lady you get that naturally. Yeah. And most of the time, my hair doesn't even cost that much. This hairstyle, we just did $15. That's what she spent her like. Look, okay. $15. Mm -hmm. Well, what well, do you You wear well, beauty. No. You wear it well. Yeah. Thank you. I think that um one of the biggest things is like for me, I feel like parents don't realize that you two were once this age. 100%. And it's like, but I was already out on my own at her age. Oh, and that's her biggest thing. And, and so, I was already and so paying was, my own bills. Thank at her you. Age. And so I was, was I. By myself, my parents, and nobody was around at her age. Thank you. And, and so, so was I. The same mama. Yeah, I think so. I and so like was just, I. So trap. my mama couldn't tell me what to do Nothing. in my own house because I'm paying my own bills. But I think there's a huge difference of like y'all, even now, like our day and age, and like this day and age for her at 18. Like it's a lot of. It's a lot of differences. Like she grew up in an age like almost with the internet. 
100%. You know what I mean? Like, we grew up, well, we remember before the internet, we were, like had both. Yeah, but before internet or during internet, bills still got to be paid. Yeah, but it's work like... Work still got to be worked. See, I've been working since I was 15. And I was out the house at 16. Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank so you. So it's different when you... When, Amen. Cause, cause adulting and, and life experiences, they make you grow up. So they make you see things differently. So the way we parent you guys is more on a sense of, all the sacrifices we make that you don't have to go through them. And then Thank when you. we grow up and we're giving you these things and even when you look around you and half the people around you don't have that, you still, we still feel unappreciated or like you don't see us like we the bad guy. Yeah. I would say that. You don't feel time. like that until she's 25. But I, I, but I said, I feel like if I wasn't your mom, maybe you would like me. But at the end of the day, it's only my job to make you an adult. It's only my job to, to correct you, you and to get on you. It's not for me to try to attack you, but I, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but before I leave, I want to make sure I set you up for the best, to be your best self, yeah. you know? And that ain't pretty all the time. I'm so happy Peach somebody. into the choir over there. Right, <laughs> exactly. But I think that is, uh, well, one, we do appreciate y'all. I'm going to say, because sure. I'm Thank at that age where, where <laughs> hindsight is 2020. Yeah. And that's what I'm telling you. It's going to come eventually where... She gonna realize like, dang, a lot of that stuff. Or I'm so grateful that my mama taught me how to do this because my friends out here don't. And you struggling, yeah. sis. I see you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, what was your mama doing? You right. know, if you she, have she those, be doing that yeah, now. She be that. having some moments now where she'd be like, and I tell her when she says things she's like, why? Why would her mom do that? Would you do me like that? I definitely. You know, and I'd be like, sometimes you, I think you don't realize it's, like, it's a lot of people and parents aren't like this. Mm-hmm. A lot Absolutely. of people around. That's not an everyday thing. Is there anything that y'all feel like as moms y'all would have done differently now? Like now that she's 18, I'm not going to say you done because you obviously you, a mother is never done. Never. <laughs> but like the bulk of the raising part is done. And you look back, especially like having like the graduation moment and it's like full circle. It's like, okay, well, we completed these major chapters. Big like, moment. looking back, is there anything that y'all would have done differently? Especially with, like, like I said, it's a different day and age. It's, I know one thing my mom said that um, she thought was so important or wasn't important then was she used to preach to me, like, my looks would never get me anywhere. It was only your brains. <laughs> you only, And it's like, baby. That's the opposite. <laughs> She's using <laughs> I present because, yourself. Everything you do. I used to say yourself. something slow. She'd be like, "You're so pretty." Yeah. Just because I would say something real slow, she'd be like, "Oh, when she say something slow, I'm like, well, thank God, you're right?" <laughs> I don't know where that's gonna get. <laughs> so plus two is not equal. Right. <laughs> you're so pretty. All right, but now, I had, like hindsight, now that the that's world funny. has changed, she's like, "Oh, I didn't even realize like." through the social media, you can actually make a living off of what you look like. Like, 100%. That has gotten me in so many doors. So she's like, now that she's, now that time has passed, it's like, wow, that's a big lesson that I used to preach, preach, preach that actually I was kind of wrong or I could have tweaked it a little bit. Yeah, but you know, I I didn't have an ability to I didn't have the ability to see into the future to I see know, that like, you know yeah. so but brains are still very important they are yeah so you my, ain't gonna get this, you but so far right <laughs> so the you know my era education is was the key yeah. you know making sure that you were smart enough to hold your own was was important to me it yeah. still is it's yeah still and is. so that's you know, and I'm grateful for that yeah. but I feel like that's just one thing that I know you realize like dang I preach that every single day and oh, get out man. of the mirror you so damn vain <laughs> get out my of the mirror my family used to say that to me but even my teachers would say that your looks ain't gonna get you nowhere I'm like ha eat your heart out <laughs> <laughs> got you very far thank you yeah, yeah. No, but no. is there anything you feel like looking back, you can be like, dang, I, sh- I preached that so much and maybe it wasn't as important as I thought. Or maybe I wish I had did this one differently. Um, I think for me, and I'm still working on it, I, I'm sure. But um, because she is a lot more sensitive than me, um, I'm better at it now, like considering emotions and allowing her the time to process them before I. Before I'm like, well, what's wrong? Because I'm so solution mindset. I want to know right then and there because nobody wants to see their kid hurting. Especially mm-hmm. if you feel like you can do something about it and you can't. Um, maybe I would have just walked that out slower, you know, because I think especially the way I grew up, tears and that's weakness. We ain't got time for that. Get right. up. Let's go. Let's go. The right. world is tough. It's even harder when you get outside. Like I, I, I hammered like you got to be tough. You got to be strong. And I still believe there's a strong balance of being bold and being strong because this world is hard. But I think um, 
I would have allowed her to like just kind of process her feelings more. Like, just like, okay, if you're not ready to talk about it, it's okay. Yeah. I'm not going to get on you because you don't want to talk about your feelings. Yeah. Because you may not even know your own feelings. Yeah, you're still trying to feel them and figure it out. You know what I'm saying? But I think earlier on, I pressured her a lot more about like, just say what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I was, I wanted to fix it and I couldn't. And I would have given myself more grace on it and allowed her more freedom to just be like, it's okay if you cry. Yeah. It's not that big of a deal. You want to cry, cry. Yeah. You know? Or if you're not feeling it, that's fine. That's fine, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Instead of the pressure of, you just got to get up. You just got to keep going. And, and don't get me wrong. I think there's a balance that you do. But if you want to cry about it first, that's fine. You can do both. Yeah. You, can you really both. can do you both. Really can. Two things can be true at once. You can do both. Yeah. So What you think, Naeja? I agree. Do you feel like there's anything else she could have did differently? Mm-mm. I feel like it was like, for me, I was, I was just really sensitive growing up. I think I'm working on it more. Like, I'll just... Sit there with a straight face. They don't like that, but at least I'm not crying. Because when we talk to her, she'll just, I'm like, Hello. you're not going to say anything. But that's really me to try not to fight. I mean, cry. try not to cry. Yeah. yeah. Fight like, too. No, I'm just like, like you're processing the emotions and you're hearing them on the inside without letting it affect you. I feel you. Everybody got their own defense Mechanism. mechanisms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Is there anything, like, speaking of, like, this new day and age with social media and even, like, how you share your family on social media? I know a lot of people used to feel like, oh, no, I'm not going to post my kids or I can't share my family because, like, the weirdos are, like, how has social media and incorporating her being a teenager, like, how has that affected your parenting styles or rules? You know what I mean? Like, when it came to, because, like, my mama didn't have to give me rules about social media, like, or have talks with me about like, you know, it's okay to post this. It's not okay to you post You know what's crazy is though, she didn't even get access to her own social media till like 18. And you're yeah. on your birthday. I had, it she was only on my phone. So everything she posted or didn't post, it was approved first. Okay. I didn't, and, you know, I do think you have to be careful, especially it's one thing when you have social media and maybe you don't have as many following and stuff like that. But when you're a public eye, You know what I'm saying? And even bigger because, you know, Rod was in the NFL. So there's always eyes. And now that social media has grown to be what it is, um, you know, your location. I'm going to play about that. You're being very careful, never posting Mm -hmm. what school you go to. Certain things I just felt like she hated me for a while. Just to everybody else can post whatever they want. But I was like, if if we're going to have social media, I'm going to teach you how to use social media Mm -hmm. in a way that's going to benefit you, not for your social life. School, church, home, that's your social life. Mm -hmm. Social media is a business platform that you can really learn to eat from if 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 even older parents learn how to use it and teach their kids how to use it the right way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who will just want to get famous for anything. And it's like, no, we're not going to do that. No, we're not. Get some business about yourself. Mm -hmm. And now she has a decent following and she has been building. And even now that she has her own page, she'll tell me like, oh, what do you think of this? And making sure her lighting or whatever the case may be. So I think it's about educating her to use it in a way that's going to benefit her instead of hurt her. But I like that day she wasn't allowed to log on unless mm-hmm. it was on your phone. That's smart because I do be feeling like, especially like with my niece and she got a phone, I'm like, I don't want her to have all them apps on her phone. Lots. It's a lot because you're constantly being fed so much at such a young age where you still trying to figure out like your own body imaging or your 100%. own, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's no, so it's much. You're being fed subconsciously all these different images or Sa- even the sounds like things that they're saying you're not thinking that you it's programming but it's yeah. programming it was an issue even for i mean it was hard for her i think even in school because she didn't like when people would compare her to me like oh that's your mom or teachers knew or whatever the case may be it's like oh when you have a public family it can be more pressure on her to like are you gonna be like that and it's like dang i'm my own person right. and I don't know right. yeah. so yeah. allow me to just figure it out without it yeah i was gonna say how did like her being public and even like you know all of us all of her friends and everybody got all these platforms like how did Mm -hmm. it affect you as a teenager like even wanting to be on social media or dealing with it in real life with people knowing and following your parents so for a short time I felt like I just didn't want to be on social media I was like I don't care because this is annoying for one I hate taking pictures it's always like a production but I feel like it's more fun now but um at school everybody knowing who my mama was Guys be like, oh, so you're going to look just like your mom. They would try to hit on me. And I'm just like, I don't like that. Yeah, Even teachers would be weird. funny with it. Like, I remember my middle school teacher. He was really cool. But he was like, he was like, when your mom going to let me take her out on a date? And I was like, that's such a thing I don't want to hear in the seventh grade in my right. math class. And so it was just always they're like, oh, you're going to look like your mom. So when are you going to holler at me? Or 
the girls or all the other like female teachers or other girls like, oh, your mom's so bad. Da, 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 da. You don't really look like her. Oh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just always something crazy. Well, yeah. Like, and, you know, and I chose like a small group of friends who really just didn't look into my personal life at home through social media. They got to know me through me. So it was like more so. And then I was like, OK, y'all are cool enough to bring over. They got to meet my mom. They didn't meet her through social media. They met her in person, you know. Yeah. I just yeah. felt like it was very selective. And yeah. Because people do be weird. You'd be like, what's your motive? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to be my mama? Are you trying to be my friend just so you can come over or mm -hmm. be on people page? Or it's yeah. like all type of weird stuff. And no, then like the teachers would be saying stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, where do we draw the line? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's inappropriate. Yeah. And we see stuff way before they do anyways, even as parents with certain girls or people or yeah. friends. It's like that one right there ain't your friend. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And it Oh, wait, before we get to that, though, I was going to say, did her having this platform and having a lot of followers ever make you want or not want to be a part of social media? Like, did you ever be like, oh, yeah, I see how my mom has been an entrepreneur. So I want to definitely start, you know, be I would say Kylie Jenner, like the next like I want to have a bunch of followers and get, you know, yeah. famous or make money on social media. Or were you like, oh, no, nah, I see how much my mom does have to film content or whatever. So I definitely don't want to do that. Like, how did it influence your wanting to be a part of social media? No, seeing her go through the motions of everything was so fun because I was like either even if I wasn't on screen, I was definitely behind scenes. And it was just so fun, like get, watching her get ready. It's always where's my lip gloss. Da, 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 da. But it's, it's it's funny. And then. All right, sit down. We gotta make it there in time. But I, I enjoyed it. Like, I, it made me want to pursue like my influencers. You know, yeah, I just I want to be an entrepreneur. Yeah, building everything out. She's super into beauty as well, though. So it's good for her. Oh, yeah. She just actually likes to do. It. Yeah, like, she wants to be a esthetician. She wants to do the tattooing. I want to be the person that gets, gets it done. It done. <laughs> well, look, that's the perfect. Oh, it's yeah. perfect combo. Uh, sorry, I keep. It. Yeah. Yeah, um, so yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. But you just said something that's really, um, I think every child has heard or mom has said is like, that's not one of your friends or she jealous of you. Uh, or, Watch that one. Yeah. So like, how have, have you ever had a friend or have, has your mom ever pointed out like, that's not one of your little friends and she was right? Yes. <laughs> it was very recent. That's what we said. 17 was a hard year <laughs> because uh, I was on this cheer team back in middle school with this girl and. I'm thinking, oh, she didn't like me from the from the jump. But, you know, I'm, I'm always like, you can't not like me. So That's I, all they feel like. Exactly. Like, like, you not like, like me. me. Right. It's me. It's me. So I pushed for the friendship. And then, you know, I thought it was good. I was I was able to go to her house. She was able to come over. Um, She had younger sisters, so she got to hang out with Layla. But got to high school. She got weird. She she was different. We invited her to a, a spring break trip to Destin. And it was just, that's when it was like, mm that's not your friend for real because yeah. then we got on a dance team and she really just switched up like yeah because I, I i i don't choose her friends but it's certain lessons that i mean i'm gonna protect her don't get me wrong but at the same time i'm like i'm gonna show you something but you know i personally learned the hard way so i think sometimes you got to go through it to understand what i'm saying mm -hmm. to feel it in this specific situation so i was telling her this ain't it this ain't it but i was like okay yeah, okay, you gotta go learn. Ahead. You, you gotta wanna, hit you that. Argue yep. back, or you think that's the one, or no, it's not like that. You wanna? I'm like, I, I'm like, it's a beautiful thing that you look for the good in people. Don't get me wrong, but that will come back to bite you a lot of times. You have to believe people when they show you who they are. Mm -hmm. Like when she's telling your business, and when she, when you talking about something else privately, and she go tell that. I'm like, pay attention to pay all attention. them signs. Like you know what I mean? Friends don't do that. If you say right. something in confidence. You don't say nothing to nobody. You're not messy. You're not trying to put you. And this particular girl just kept doing it. Every time. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So that 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 got revealed. Very messy. And um, almost got her in a lot of trouble, too, at school. Because they all got into a big fight. It was that girl's fight. But she was defending Pulling everybody her. else in. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then the mom pulled her out of school the next day to avoid her getting in trouble or having to deal with all of that. I still might put hands on her mama. No, I, 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 tell her, I tell her every time. I said, if I yeah. see them, no. Got to clock no, out. No, I always tell her every time. Just ignore it. Let it go. But it's still, but it was like, when she started to realize, like, now light bulb goes off. But then yeah. even since then, it's like, okay, you might be knowing what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah, it takes, and it takes, um, I think that a lot of times parents want to prevent the pain 
or prevent destruction sometimes. 100%. So it's like they but sometimes trying to, you gotta tell you, go through it. You got to let them go through it. 100%. And I know we had a similar thing like that about this boy. She used to tell me this boy was not for me over and over again. <laughs> Every six months, I would get called talking to this boy. But it was like, it wasn't until she stepped back and was like, all right, I'm going to let you do it. Yeah. And then about six months later, I was like, ah, I don't do this anymore. No right. <laughs> Well, I think it just be the fun that. of the rebellion sometimes. It's yeah. like the push the pull dynamic that Definitely. make you keep going back and back. But I feel like I'm I I listened eventually. Eventually, yeah. but I could have saved you six months of heartache and pain had you listened when I told you. Probably could have mm. saved me more than that. Yeah, yeah. At, at least that amount of time. Well, it was necessary. <laughs> it made me who I am today. <laughs> Did it? Baby, <laughs> that really have something to do with it. <laughs> was just a hard headed moment. <laughs> it's just a hard headed moment. No, but there's so many things like I feel like we wish we could change in you know each other, especially when you're under the same roof. And Ooh. as a mom, you see so much of you in her. You know what I mean? No, no she doesn't. She says we're nothing alike. We're so opposite. And really? We're so opposite. Layla, she's a lot like me, okay. personality-wise, which can be like, Ugh. but at the same time, like, I get you. Mm -hmm. But we're so opposite. So, so what is there anything about me? I was going to say, what would you change about her? What would you change about her? I don't even know. What would you change about me? You could be honest. I don't, you could be no, definitely I honest. No, I honestly just can't think about it because I, I just... Because what? I don't know because so, we're just so different. I don't know. But what do you wish I was more like? Passive. You wish I was more <laughs> passive. Yeah. And I wish she was more aggressive. Because she T, I get what you're saying. Because she T is going to address everything, everything up front. So you wish like something, she, she just, just let it go. go. <laughs> just relax. Please alone. I guess I have not more comfortable day. being uncomfortable. No, she should be like, well, since we're here, I just want to let you know that I'm not like that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's, it's That's like, a good trait, though, because you know what? It allows you to address things and you don't carry them. No you don't, resentment. It doesn't free. weigh on you. I'm free. Yeah, you're free. And it's okay, I'm, I'm if, I'm yeah, it's okay yeah. if you don't change, but at least I know how to move. And right. you know at least you got saying? it off your chest. But yeah, but me holding it in and just looking at you sideways and still hanging around, I'm not, I can't do That's that. That's weird. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, yeah. What do you but wish, yeah. what do you wish you could have changed or could change about me? You know, how I used to tell you all the time is that you were just too giving of yourself. Mm. You're just too free, too giving. Just, you know, you get too much too soon. Yeah. Yeah. To everybody. So nice. Yeah. Friendly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, w I would change that about me as well. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could. It literally doesn't even, and it has affected every single relationship, like romantic relationships, certain friends that weren't my friends that I gave too much too soon that didn't deserve. It has mm -hmm. affected me in so many different ways. I wish I could change that about myself. I wish I could. I wish I could change how much you yield. <laughs> how much I yell? Yeah. Like I, you just well, loud. But, I'm, but unfortunately, you can't change you how much I yell. And my yelling was for your good. What? Yeah, it was for your benefit. I think you could have said all of that at a level three. No. <laughs> but, but, like, you, don't but, but you know what? Th thank you, TJ. When you get loud, they're like, oh. But She's if you serious. say it, if I say the same thing, oh, pick that up. I don't. Pick that up. Chi we just had this conversation on our last podcast. Pick it up. Now you're like, Chi Chi, we just had this. We just had the same conversation on our last on our last podcast. And it was like, well, should parents curse? Well, I don't want to curse. I don't want to take it there. I don't. But that's the only thing. You when I say, damn it, you know, you understand that you know I'm 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 there. You're right. taking me there. Now like, you're like, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, I right. I'm like, don't worry about it. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I did. But when I get loud, if I get violent, <laughs> now you, now, now you, you got remember some what I was happy to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No urgency. It's like everything is slow motion. Yeah. It's like, where's the urgency? She's like, like now, now, not on your time. <laughs> always. <laughs> Oh, maybe all yep, like the vein in your head is popping out. Right. Yep, yep, yep. In my neck. Yep. Yeah. And you know, I, I, I would have said, Sabrina, go clean your room. I would love to call, talk so calmly like Sabrina. that. Sabrina. Now, this is like, you know, I'm not back to back. Sabrina, go clean your room. 15 minutes later, still mm -hmm. sitting there. Sabrina, I said, go clean your room now. Another 15 minutes later. <laughs> Sabrina, didn't I tell you you're going to go clean your room? 
like, I'm going to do it. And then about five minutes later, damn it, didn't I say mm-hmm. get your ass to yeah. clean that room, you know? So I've got to go there to make her realize. And then she's going to mouth back at that point. Oh. And I'm about to say, look, you know, say one more word and I promise I'm going to hit you in the throat. <laughs> <laughs> then that, that, was, that was always my threat. Say one more word. I'm about to knock hell out of you. I was <laughs> like, hell is not in me, it's in you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody knock it out of you. <laughs> No, but I think that like with everything, I I was gonna ask, do you feel like your parenting styles have changed or adapt to like society? And I know some things always remain the same, but do you feel like anything? Because especially you have two daughters that are uh, ten years a, apart, a Eight big age gap. Yep, and that's how me and my sister were. So mm-hmm. my sister's um nine years older than me. Gotcha. So like, do y'all feel like y'all parenting styles had to change and adapt with the times? No, that's it, that, to me. Easy. To me, my parenting style changed with the child. Okay. You see, I could yeah. tell your sister, Tisha, go upstairs and get your room clean. Okay, she's gonna get up. She's gonna go. She's gonna clean, and that's it. She's not gonna clean. She's just gonna get up and well, go. That, that's right. fine. But at least right. she moved. <laughs> She At least clean. she moved, you know. <laughs> I don't have to say it 10 times. But with you, I got to say it 10 times and then threaten your life with it. Okay. So, it, it, you know, if the child dictates. Exactly. I'm you so know, glad you're saying that. The because child dictates that this is the same way with Layla. She will, she don't, she's never had a spanking. Not to mention, I do think it's a big difference in. We were only eight now. Right. Yeah, so way, she didn't really did nothing to get us making no, no, four. <laughs> yeah. But let me say, but I also think being 10 years apart, even just being an adult when I had my child, rather than 19 having a child, I think my maturity as I grew, you know, learning, having a kid when you're still a kid is, is really hard, period. Right. Right. But then when you learn to be a woman and who you are and then you have a kid, I think parenting styles change because you've changed. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you grow. Patience grows. You know what I'm saying? You you learn to parent more. Your stress level is, yeah, is it's different. It's different. You're, I'm not struggling. I'm right. more stable, right. which right. has a right. lot to do with, you know right. what I'm saying? I get to eat when you get to eat. Right. Like there's plenty of times I couldn't eat to feed her because mm-hmm. I couldn't afford to take care of us both. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? So, stress levels for sure, being older and being married and being settled definitely makes a big difference having a partner and have a helper versus being a single mom like I was with her. But, again, they are completely opposite. Layla is just as aggressive as I am. She's going to say exactly what she want, how how she want it. If you're eating it, I want that. Her, on the other hand, will see me eating it, won't say it, but then resent me for not asking her. Right, right, <laughs> right. Like, well, just say what you want. Like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So the same thing with her, I feel like, until she get out, I had to yoke her up. But with Layla, if I just look at her, like... Same, same thing. Same thing. Moving. Same thing. My oldest daughter, I could look at her a certain way. She knew I was serious, okay? And then tested. You know, and then and, and then tested. But this one I here, it was all, look. You don't think you're a tester? It was always something to be said. <laughs> <laughs> it was always something to be said. Yes, it was. It, no, no matter actually, what I said. Acting like we combat no problem. everything. I combative. Had everything to, I said. Oh, Thank you. Had combative a story. You sharper. No, you, no. What, you <laughs> weren't making me sharper. The big yeah. team shark. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She was she was combative and always had something. Well, then you say. also this is one of them things that I was gonna ask too. This is one of them things you raised me to have, but then it kind of backfired when it came to you. <laughs> because she raised me to be opinionated. Speak your mind. Speak up when you don't when you feel something. And then so it when it came to her, she say something, I'm opinionated. I'm speaking my so mind. Some we were talking about at the beginning. Watch your mouth, though. Know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it was you, that with your friend, yeah, right, right. Not with your mother. That's right. It's yes, that's, ma'am. That's right. Okay. That's right. So Is remember, it? I'm not that little friend. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Be like that outside. Friend. Be bold outside. Speak up outside. Stand your ground outside. But in this house, it's I'm I'm the head honcho. Um, that's it. Yeah. That's it. No argument. That's it. That's but it. You spoke a lot about like uh, well, you just mentioned like Rod and Layla and like the big age gap and the difference in like you being able to parent differently because you're in a completely different like more stable environment. Yeah. You know, it's a two parent home now. It's like you said, you're more mature as a woman. Yes. So like, what was that like, Naisha? You growing up, kind of like growing up with your mom. Did you feel like you were growing up with her? Did you like? And what was it like now seeing the difference of how she parents Layla? Um, I have to say, 
growing up with her, it was more like growing up with Rob because Rob was like the brother to me. We was always <laughs> arguing like back and forth over her still. attention. Still, yeah, still. Mm-hmm. So, um, I don't. Do know. you think our parent Layla was softer than us? Yeah, she's you. a lot softer with Layla than <laughs> she is with me. I just feel like I just was always. It was always an argument for sure. But I don't think like I don't. She always had something slick to say. But I would say it under my breath so she wouldn't hear me. But she I do. Be a little under your breath or not, you got something slick to say. But Layla will say, say it just. It Layla, Layla will say it with her chest. Mm. Layla don't cut, talk to me crazy. She'll try Rod. She she'll she'll do me. Rod, but they don't say nothing. They just let her say whatever. No. And you be like, I could have never got away I with saying it. I could have never. Her or Lil Rod. We definitely, yeah. Lil Rod is 21. We're a blended family. Mm-hmm. So he's 21, she's 18, and then Layla's the baby. Mm-hmm. So it's different. We're different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But they're they getting soft in their old mm-hmm. age, is what you <laughs> They're not going as hard mm-hmm. no more. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, well, they're still a little hard on me, though. We are, because you're, but, and, but I've been on her since 15. Like, it's going to get harder every year. It's going to get harder every year. The responsibilities are harder every year. And sometimes it's a, it's a battle because I feel like she wants Layla to do the same thing she's doing. Mm-hmm. No, nah, she's in second grade. Yeah. She's not washing the dishes. She don't have to clean up the same way that you have to. Mm. Y'all responsibilities is what I had to. That's why I'd be like, where are you? You are not doing chores at eight. Yes. Yes, I was. What were you doing? I was washing dishes. I have been you like, she can learn how to do something around here. Wipe yeah. the counter. Layla, some. And Layla will wash the dishes. Sometimes when they're gone, I'm like, Layla, come home with the dishes. She'll just come over here and just wash dishes. But I'm, I'm like, good job. It's your responsibility. Get it done. Just be the phone. I know sister. it's my responsibility. And I am. See, they always say I'm I'm, I'm too mean to Layla. But that's she only when she on get her. on my nerves. But for the most part, Layla's in my room. Or I'm in her room. We are chilling. Yeah, but you're always her. playing. When she ain't doing something, go do that. It's like, I'm her mother. Ooh, it's cleaning. okay. You can be that. No, she can't. She's the sister. I tell her what to it's, do. It's only I only tell her what to do when we're like in a rush. And for the most part, it's like I'm trying to take a load off of you. And she don't see it that way. She's like, you're just being mean to your sister. Yeah, because it's not it's not a load for me to, for you to unload. But it's something you have to carry. Well, like mm. you're on a business call. I'm like, come on, Lynn, like get out the room. Like, but that's I'm big though. Too. I will say that's big because a lot of parents sometimes, and I think it's unfair, a lot of parents will be putting the responsibility of raising the younger kids on the older kids. Yeah, I'm, and I'm I love like that, that you like you just made it clear. You just said that like that's not your responsibility. And we talk about that because that's a, a lot of children. So that's a blessing. A lot of children be losing their whole childhood because they had to raise to- their little brother and sister. Mm-hmm. And it's like you didn't choose to have that child. That's not your responsibility. Not your responsibility. And you know what? And I applaud you for that, too, because that was always my position. You know, my children are their children. They, they don't have children. Right. And so whatever Sabrina needed, that was my responsibility to make sure she got. Yeah. And so that wasn't a responsibility of a sister. And likewise, and I made sure that they know my, my you you do what you want to do. You know, participate in whatever activities you want to participate in. You go outside, you play. Spring, it's not your responsibility. No, you not know. at all. Don't mean you don't have to babysit sometimes. Oh, yeah, no, they still be watched yeah. over or nothing. <laughs> but that's not for you to do. If I'm out of town, that's not for you to take right. care of. It's not for you to drive her the to school or it. pick yeah. her up. It's not for you to not be able to go on your swim team or start a business that you want or go to work on whatever schedule you want because you got to work around mine. Absolutely right. not. Mm-hmm. I'm here to set you up just the same way I am with her. Right. You know, but um, I mean, I appreciate you thinking about me in that sense. But 100%, I never want you to carry that ever. Mm-hmm. Right. So yeah. do you ever feel like like when the family was first starting to blend, like did you have any worries or apprehension? For sure. I was really? like, I was like, I was like, I don't like Rod. <laughs> she hated um, it. Really? It was in process. Yeah. I'm sure it is because it's like, I don't know you. Like you been come- she, he's been in her life since she was four. Yeah. So it was it was one thing earlier on, but when we got married and had kids, I went so I had Layla. It was like, okay, wait, that's her real dad. Now he, it's different. Wait, so how old were you then? Child when Layla time. was born? Nine, mm-hmm. nine, nine ten. ten. Yeah. yeah, that's when she was born. And then, I mean, I was We got married, married the same year. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I got pregnant very quickly. You know what they was doing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but so like, what did that feel like for you? Like when Layla was born and, you know, what, what, did, what were your thoughts? I, I always just thought like I would be the stepchild for like, like for real, for real now, because there is a more like connected bloodline in the family. Layla mm-hmm. being both of y'all's, and they felt like, okay, I'm not gonna get the same attention, or I'm not gonna get the same like like love like she would get. But I mean, I I, I can go back look now. It's the same. Like they love me just as much as they love Layla. Like Rod didn't care whether I was his or not. Like he was still 
providing taking me out for my birthdays and making sure yeah. i had everything i needed um but just being blended it was hard and then with little rod too because it was like okay that's rod's son but he's with me and i want that to be my dad because mm-hmm. so it was like when i felt somebody trying to take something that was mine that's when i would get mad but for the most part like i can look back and be like okay that's his son but that's at the end of the day that's both of our dads though. yeah it was a struggle she went through that phase around 10 and she was like, well, that's not my dad. And she wanted to know who her real dad is. And her father's never been in the picture. So we reached out or whatever and decided to let her go up there for the summer. To so meet her <laughs> real dad. Yeah. So go up there. He's still living in the projects in Newark. And um, this is her first time, like, being up there and being over there. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, this, at the end of the day, I never want her to feel like I took it away. Right. Or, right. you know, this is not a good situation. Sometimes you got to learn for yourself. It's like, okay, so It's like, it. oh, no, nah, I don't want to go back over yeah, there. Who does not know it all? First of all, he didn't even show up to the airport. Nope. Oh, yeah. Which was crazy. So already, even no matter what she's gone through with Rod, she knows he's going to show up. Regardless, he's going to lecture the whole way. Rod right, has so, set a standard already. Honey, he's already <laughs> set a standard. And, and But for her to be able to see both sides. I'd be like, well, who you want to show up on career day? Right, him. right, yeah. absolutely. But, uh, she cr- she cries every day. Yeah, she wanted to come home so bad, but I was like, no, stay. <laughs> you gonna have you wanted this? Yeah, this yeah. is what you spoke. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, it's okay. I think that is normal, and it's a lot of moms out there listening that have daughters that or kids that are now dating or you know. Mm-hmm. T- finding their second husband or you know what I mean, stepping back out there. So I think it's important for moms to know and kids to know that. Even having those feelings at first, being afraid is normal. 100%. Right. Yeah. yeah like and dealing with rejection. And I think that's a real thing. But like I said, her father wasn't there. And mm-hmm. then she met Rod and he had a son, but he was there for her and he went through his own stuff. You know what I'm saying? So when she went through that season, she went up there and then when she came back, boy, she ain't never said, you ain't my dad again. <laughs> <laughs> it's the honest. I never said that again. She came home so humble and apologetic. She ain't never lived in the projects or been to one. So when she walked in there and it was just dirty and it was like, it was one bath for I swear. She was like, I ain't never going back. The first thing I did when I got in there, he was talking, so you're going to sleep on the pull out couch. I started cleaning my area. I was just <laughs> cleaning. Yeah. Was like, you know, and yeah. you know what's important too is for women and men to hear that it's important when you, when there's a blended family, mm-hmm. how men make the 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 children feel mm-hmm. very you know, important and very important and it's important that they recognize and realize and women recognize and realize you know that their children are going to feel a certain way so that goes back to what we said earlier it's very important when you bring people around your children and who you bring around mm-hmm. your children mm-hmm. you know because you can either it can come out to be a very positive thing or unfortunately, it can turn out 100%. to be a very tragic thing. 100%. And kids you know? go through breakups too. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's, and that's, that's important. The, and, that's, and that's a and that's the best scenario. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you can get these men coming in your house that you don't know what they really got going on or what they're doing. With what the demons they? Yeah. What, you know what I'm saying? You got right. to really, really be careful who you right. allow around your right. children, daughters, and sons. But right. Absolutely. Like you said, even yeah. even if, like you said. The, best worst case scenario like your children fall in love with this guy and then all of a sudden y'all don't work out that breakup is hard no, break, kids go through breakups yeah too, that's hard but even like i remember one time we were at the house and you said something to asian i never forgot this like um and i hope y'all okay with me saying uh-huh. this but um now asia was like well when you and rod healed mm. y'all didn't let me heal with y'all mm-hmm. because I think y'all were taught you, I forgot how we got on that, but basically like how you and Rod were young and Naisha was kind of yeah, growing up with y'all therapy. and then y'all got in therapy. Marriage and, counseling. Yeah, in therapy and marriage counseling and y'all started to heal in y'all relationship, but it was so much that she had already been like exposed to or mm-hmm. had even personalized or dealt with on her own. Yeah. And she felt like, well, dang, I didn't get a, a chance to heal from going through that either. But yeah. it's like, how did you, what did that, or have you even started? Like, what does that process look like for you to heal from the things that you've experienced with your parents? Honestly, I don't even know because I just look at them like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. We definitely were young. I, I, and I say this a lot. People know our story and stuff. But, you know, Rod and I were, we were for the street. <laughs> he was young. He was a young black athlete in Atlanta. He never mama's boy. All about him. Single child syndrome to the T. To, 
Right. <laughs> Me, young, straight out of Jersey, wild, survival mode, single mom. Like, we wanted to be together. We didn't know how to be together. Mm-hmm. And um, he was my first adult relationship on top of that, you know? So trying to learn how to be in a relationship with someone that you're crazy about, but you don't even know what love is, for mm-hmm. real, let alone love yourself. It was a lot of, like, just toxicness, back and forth. I'm leaving. I'm not leaving. Fighting. I'm not screaming. You know what I'm saying? Which is even more toxic for a kid to go through. We out. We in a hotel. We leaving. We, you know, just on. And even before I got with him, I probably lived in a different place every year. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So we didn't have that structure or stability until she probably was about five, five or six, pre-K. Yeah. And then from there, we've lived in the same place. But it definitely was a process. But when we started therapy, and I didn't realize she felt like that until we did that vision board party, but it was like, because we were in marriage counseling. We put her and stuff through school, and, I mean, through the church and like the, the groups and small groups. And you had the girl that would take you out, like the big sister program to kind of help her with that. Because I do think it's an, an outside outlet is really important. But I don't feel like I said earlier on, I would always be like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And you never to me. tell me. Yeah, so you and, don't even and you know. Wouldn't come. So I couldn't even know what you're going through because you're not even telling me. So I can't help you. You know what I mean? So to feel like, and of course, marriage counseling is marriage counseling. I don't have to do it with the kids. We got to learn how to be whole a couple over here yeah. before we can even. And, and that was hard too, because like transitioning, it was hard to learn how to be a wife when I was already a mother and there's an order. You know what I'm saying? How do I be on one accord with somebody when I feel like we're already one accord? You know what mm. I'm saying? And that's not the way it's designed. I'm supposed to be one and stand as a union to parent this person, this mm-hmm. kid. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. And it was hard because even if they would get into it, now I'm like, well, don't talk to her like that. Well, don't say that, which is still unhealthy. Yeah. Because we have to look like one union. We have and all of us in this house. hundred percent. Right. But there has to be order as far as the kids are the kids. Mm-hmm. But we don't agree with the certain how we're going to punish or how we're going to do this. We have to talk about that separately. And we weren't doing that. I wasn't doing that, mm-hmm. you know? So it was still just a process of just learning how to be married. It's not like I've had the example. And you know? I think, like you said, as adults, I think that was my first time as an adult even mm-hmm. realizing, like, wow, the relationships your parents have. Obviously, like they say, you grow up to look for your, like, as a girl, you might look for your dad and your mate or whatever. But even just the things that you feel like you got to heal from. <laughs> yeah, no, you know for what sure. I mean? 100%. It's like, oh, wow, I, I needed to heal from that. So it, you internalize it. You don't even know how it's going to affect you until later on. Definitely. But do you feel like it's anything good that you learned from witnessing? Seeing like your mom and Rod's relationship <laughs> that you want transition. No. Um, um, probably the fact that how involved they are in the church and in that way, like their foundational is with God. Like that's what I strive for in future relationships, even with friendships. It doesn't matter. Like I like how attuned you guys are with you. I want that foundation. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. That's, yeah, good. that's, that's a great quality. That, I would have not said that at 18. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, you're looking for a godly man, all right. Yeah. Good. You know, y'all doing something right over there at the gardeners? Right. Listen, because I will say that was the one of the biggest things for us that transitioned because, or transitioned over, because it was always, we always argued, you're right, I'm wrong, I'm right, you're wrong. You know what I mean? But when you lean not on your own understanding, but what God say about it, well, we can't argue with that. Yeah, it's like, Either this is right. what it is. We can't right. argue with me about what the Bible say. I can't. Yeah. I didn't put it there. You know what I'm saying? But I can argue your opinion and mine. Right. Now we can learn to respectfully disagree and be like, well, I don't believe that and I don't stand on that. But it's cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to operate different. I can respect that. We're just different. That doesn't change the foundation of what, you know, the ground we laid. So that's good. That's dope. Is there anything that you feel like, oh, no, I do not want that <laughs> that you've seen? No, not for the most part. That's for real. Too. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's, that's good. Me. Yeah. You know, you can blink twice. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Do I, love, do I look frozen? <laughs> no, I'm just okay. waiting. Just no, like I just didn't want you to be out here trying to be cute and you not hurt Chichi feelings. I like, promise, though. Say what no, I I'm about. saying everything off the top of my mind. Yeah. Nah, yeah. No, I know. I'm messing yeah. with you. She did. She has always said that, which does make me feel better in a sense of like, because when she gets into her little relationships now, whatever you want to call them, situations. Situations. There we go. It's um, like situations. Her, what I've even learned, even with certain friend groups or friends or, or women that I've met, that the way Rod and I rock together 
is not as common as I thought. I thought, well, everybody hang with their man like this or everybody do business with their man like this or they're always all together and involved with all the family functions and stuff like that. But I realized that's, it really ain't the case. A lot of people are complete opposites. They don't even hang with each other, let alone like each other half the time. So I was like, oh, so now when she's like, well, he's not as consistent. He's not right there. And I'm like, take time. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> like, we built this over here. Yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Well, you know, you got TTs and everybody that got your bag. Were you allowed to date early? I was. I don't. Oh. I won't say she was allowed. I allowed. <laughs> she, did. she did. And um, with that boy, I was sneaking with this same boy from like fifteen to seventeen. Yeah, yeah. but right. she did not want me talking to him. Like, so that's what I'm saying. I would get caught. Like, she would take my phone, change my number, like change. do all of this, and then every six months we would get caught talking again. <laughs> you know? Same yeah, until like around numbers. like 17, she was like, you just going to keep doing this. So I'm just going to let you talk to this dude. And then eventually and you realize that you're wasting your time. You know, I, I tell that to Rod every time if she comes home and says she likes or that she brings a guy around and she we always ask because she can't really go out with anybody. We don't meet. I want at least. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You For know, sure. um, he's like, oh, I like him. He's a good kid. I'm like, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> don't yeah. say you like them because then she's not gonna like right. them. Because right. Because the good right. kids right. they never want. Right. right. The right. ones that you be like, absolutely not. Because he he be on her. He'd be like, if he don't add value to you, what are you doing? Right. If being with it, if him being with you is the upgrade, then that doesn't that's a fact though. You know, yeah. but it's good to have a man telling you that stuff 100%. early. He be telling her right. early, break up with them before they break yeah. up with you. I'd be like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me some good advice that Ra has given you. Like that's something that's just stuck with you. Cause I ain't have a daddy. So tell me, girl. Uh, Let me get I can't even run. I just remember that one time where it was in middle school, seventh grade. I was like, I was really into this one boy. His name was Julian. And and my cousin was over and he just started asking questions. I was like, Oh, you got a boyfriend? I was just I looked at her. I was just like, ooh, because she knows about every guy. Like, and I, I was like, yeah, I guess kind of like him. He was just like, he was just like, like she said, don't pop, downplay yourself. Like, let let you be the upgrader for everybody. Like, you know, it, yeah. it was the same thing she just said. Like, yeah, treat you like a queen. Yeah. Right. Nah. No, he, know he your would worst. put her on game. And we would tell that even earlier on. Like, okay, understand something. He likes you for a diff different reason that you like him. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's not the same thing for girls and guys. So getting her to understand that and just put her on game earlier on, it was like, it's a problem. But she's a little crazy, though. I am crazy. <laughs> I went emotion. through her phone one time. And the same boy who she's still in the situation. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. Yeah, fifth she's been grade. consistent with the same little boy, but they won't be together because, I don't know. Anyways, good kid, too. I don't I know like either. Her. You. Anyway, she was texting him one day, and I do randomly do phone checks. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh -huh. And she was going off on him, like, don't call me, don't say nothing, whatever, whatever. She just was going in on him because I guess he didn't answer the phone. And then he finally yeah, was texting back, like, I'm so sorry, I was in basketball park because I couldn't have my phone. <laughs> I was like, and I was just like, oh, okay. I was like, you can't be going off on people just straight off. Like, give them a chance. I said, have you ever? Not it's only before? been 45 minutes. It's like, <laughs> but that's have never done it before. And now you go right okay. off. I've done that like, before. It's real. Down a little bit. That comes back to that aggressiveness. I'm aggressive outside of her. Very oh, okay. passive with them in the house. Outside, you can ask my friend. I just mean. Are you, you going to pop off? <laughs> yes. <laughs> people know not to drive me. Okay. That's that's the truth, and that's why that's the one thing that we're similar. Like, don't try me. Don't yeah, do don't do that. Well, you got it. That's honestly. good. <laughs> that's good. All right, y'all. Well, it's time for for the record. In this part of the episode, we like set the record straight. We say anything. You could clap back at a comment. Something you seen online. You could set the record straight. Maybe something that's every people always assumed about y'all. Maybe you want to set the record straight with her. You know, <laughs> for the record. Now for the record. <laughs> Not right off. Come back to me. For the record, it does get better. Oh. I just I, I just want mothers and daughters to know that it might be you might be 30 years old, <laughs> but the relationship will get better. Yeah. That's my for the record. That's it, a good one. Yeah. You will appreciate her and y'all will have a, a genuine friendship. Even if it, it's starting now slowly, you know, the further and further you get away from them, mm -hmm. the easier it is to have that relationship. I think the purpose, as, as she finds her purpose, mm -hmm. I think that's where the health thing is. Yeah. Starts. And then, like I said, you just start realizing like a lot of the stuff she said was to help me or she wasn't just tripping. Yeah. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. 
Dang, I don't care. You go. <laughs> you got to put a record. For the record, what? I'll go while you guys think it. Okay. For the record, I will say that, you know, everything we do and say as a mother is out of a genuine place of love. 100%. Mm-hmm. And it is never from in a place of anything else. It's always out of a genuine place of love and concern. I used to think you were so jealous of me. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I was oh. like, bro, you just mad because you ain't outside. <laughs> Oh God, really? Lord. But it was out of love. I tell her that. Or like you was mad because you couldn't hang, like you ain't have cool friends like me, or you was mad because you you ain't have freedom like me. Like, I don't know. I thought you was jealous. Oh Lord. But now I know it's out of love. You thought she was a hater? I thought she was a hater. (laughs) Oh, really? Look, I'm hating on her. She doesn't have her own place. She's right. She's, you know, she depends on me for everything. So (laughs) <laughs> what, what, why am I jealous? Because you had cool friends, and most Rough of the and most of the ones she had then are not the ones she had now. No, None of them. <laughs> Maybe one you still talk to every now and then, but ninety percent of them you don't have anymore. So I, I'm jealous. Shout out to all my ratchet friends out there. That's why I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm just jealous. Oh man, you got one yet? No. <laughs> I'm gonna just say for the record, I agree. Like. Even though it may, as, as kids that are listening, you know, give your parents grace. Even though it may feel like an attack sometimes, even though it feel like they on your neck. Like, it's truly because we want the best for you. And we make all the sacrifices Lord so that mercy. you don't have to, you Thank know. You. And I just give your mom grace. She's doing the best she can. She may be different from you, but it's just. Love may look different, but it's 100% love. So if you can just change your mind and perspective to understand that she's still human. Mm-hmm. She got her own battles. And she got her and life be life and for her too, but she's doing her best. And yeah. it's all love. And, and another thing to parents out there, mothers in particular, stay on those nuts. Oh, 100%. my God. Stay on, stay stay on like, those nuts. Do not like get, get off, my off of those nuts. Stay on them. He <laughs> say like, stay on your nuts. So there was this song when I was growing up um, here in Atlanta. I don't think it even made it past Atlanta, but it was like, BB, BB, B, get all my nuts. And it was like uh-huh. a ghetto ass, like D4L type of song. Uh-huh. And that was her ringtone. Like when she would call me, <laughs> that was her friend, ringtone. Oh, that was like, her ringtone on, your- on my phone. When oh. she would call me, like, BB, BB, get ring- all my nuts. They do. I, I, they do. You what would your ringtone be for me right now if you could? Oh, that's a good one. Okay, wait, that's, so that's the I want to know. So at oh, wait, this part, okay, so yeah, right. no, we're about to ask it. At this part of the episode, we ask each other a question, and you have to be honest about it. Like, either something the audience wants to know about us, or, you know, we'll ask each other something that we never ask each other, and we have to tell the truth. So think about what you really want to ask her, that you always want her to tell you the truth. But she wants to know what your ringtone would be for her at this point. But wait, but first, you got to say you're for the record. Oh, uh, just for the record. Moms, we love y'all. We do. We do. We do. Like, you know, just. Really? I don't feel like it. <laughs> really? The love just looks it's different. It's there. It's just, we just a little hard-headed. You know, you got to kick us a few times. Just get it. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's all love. It's all love. It's all love. No. <laughs> Even when you Thank you for all my yeah. years of tears and smart <laughs> <laughs> All the, the abuse. Right. Right. <laughs> but, okay. yeah, so I want to know. Chi Chi wants to know what's what your, ring? your ringtone. Big for me, booty baby? Judy. I love the way she moves. Booty ain't really not big. That's cute though. I have a cute booty though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that would be It's only ring- that because you used to complain about how grandma Judy would, how they used to call her big booty. My mother's name is Judy and she so. had a big booty and they used to call her big booty Judy. And, <laughs> and, no. and people knew grandma Judy's like, they knew her name at school. So they'd be like, oh, your mama got so a big because suit. of my mother, that's how we yeah. got ringtone. That would be her ringtone. Yeah. It's a song now. She's like, grandma. it fits. Period. That fits. Okay. Anything you want to know from her? No, I feel like it's pretty open with me. She let me know everything. It was nothing you want to know. Or ask something just for Or you me. can ask me or you can ask her. Anything, anybody, anything you want to know. Was there ever a time where you almost just like, you know, you just lost it. You was about to whoo, go off on your mom. Like, I just want to run away. 
I used to tell her that. Well, I she's talking about swinging. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm oh, for swinging. sure square up. But I just knew that wasn't going to end with it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to have to look for somewhere to live. Girl. Exactly. Now now I didn't have my finances. I didn't have my finances. I thought about it. I just didn't get past that step. Yeah. Right. <laughs> she, she, knew, she knew not to even sink it too hard. They you know, play you, slow. Yeah. Well, you got to go home and be like, like, put on some. We got to go in better not slam that door catch it and if it goes on you know all right. <laughs> oh, man. Man. Oh, for sure. Man. I definitely did. That's what I try to tell you. Y'all cooler than we was at that age already. So I know you're going to have a better relationship. <laughs> I'm telling you, because we were still like, we didn't even talk for like six, seven months my freshman year in college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it was just like, I think she was so happy for me to be gone. <laughs> and I was so happy to be gone. And then I was dating this guy and my first boyfriend, like real boyfriend in college and she hated him. So we just didn't even talk. <laughs> it was like, I'm done right now. Yeah, I need a break. I need a break. Need so a yeah, break. y'all already off to a way better start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks. Right. Yeah. Anything you want to know? Uh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Chi-Chi, for you, mm-hmm. what do you think perhaps was one of your most disappointing moments mm-hmm. with, your, with your daughter? Well, it's going to put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> Triggering. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't want to say nothing too crazy. I, I want to know what your most disappointing moment for me was. Oh, you already know. We've already had that conversation. Oh. When well, you were disappointed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, when I lost my virginity? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. oh, that's pretty disappointing. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. I think... Yeah. Um, <laughs> he was a loser. <laughs> right. I would be disappointed. I think, I'm, I'm disappointed in me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think that's probably one for me, too. And not even just because of it happening, because you know it's coming, um, but the way it happened and the way I found out. She found out going through my phone. Well, same thing. Damn. That's the same. That's all right. Uh, I think it hurt my heart, but I think that, I think what hurt me, um, like I said, I'm, out of all of our friends, you already know I'm the one with the oldest child, you mm-hmm. know, for everyone has smaller kids. So I don't really have too many friends or women I can talk to or even moms that's going to prepare me for age. this in a sense because I feel like it was in that moment that I was so sad after I found out because I felt like you look at your kids like they're just these innocent green little babies. They're just that's what you carry no matter how big they get. And then when they start doing adult such things, you there it's like I felt like my chest was ripped outside of me. Like I felt like yo she's You were cheated in some sense. Like she's not a baby no more. Right. She's and, a woman. And right. It became a different level of scary too because when you start doing things that you don't really know what you're doing, they come with consequences that you don't want. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. That now it affects everybody. Right. And what you're not going to do is be me or bring a baby home to me or Hallelujah. anything like that. So and and you want, I mean, especially being a young mom, you want so much more yeah. for them, especially when the way I struggled. So I think it hurt me to be, to think like, damn, like, you know what I mean? That could be her. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, it's just, it's a lot of emotions I think that you don't really ever know or prepare for because as a mom, you do just want to protect them. You want even from themselves. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm and saying? And they are so rebellious against it. Oh, you know, Lord. that's that's the part that hurts. Like, you little knucklehead, you don't even understand. You don't even You know, understand. what I'm trying to protect you from. You got, you don't have a clue. It's you tough. know, I get it. I and get so it. It was that part. It That part, it took me. That part was hard. Well, it's not your fault. And it was going to happen eventually. Yeah, I, but we could have prepared for it a little bit better. Had I you. feel like I, I had the conversations. I had the like, she listen, did. at the end of the day, Whatever you decide to do, I know I can't stop you, but I care more about your health 
mm-hmm. and protecting you from other things than just you not want to tell me because you're scared. Right, right, you right. You know what I'm saying? And you tell me everybody else that's doing it and got this and doing that <laughs> and stuff like that. But when it came to you, and right. I would have the conversation. Because it's easier to have the conversation, but when you when it's time to get there, all that fear is like, ooh, I didn't. Like, it was going to come either way. Like, whether you're going through my phone, I was going to say something, but I was just, I wasn't You weren't going to say, say she oh, lying. Yeah. She lying. Yeah. She lying. She lying. She wasn't going to say. Go she was going to say nothing. She was going to say. What you going to say? What you going to say? I was scared. I wasn't, I wasn't going to lie. I was scared. You know, yeah. I told one friend, and she was like, that one friend here. <laughs> and she was like, you got to, you know. And it was just like, I'm scared. So it just, you know, but you. Yeah, no, but it, that part. It's very hard to it's have. It's hard. Yeah. I don't think it's another way for a mom to find out. I mean, I'm not, I'm, you should talk I to your mom. I told my mother. You yeah, she, she, she's, she's weird. But see, I'm very open. You are very bold. <laughs> and you know what? I, 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 I know. Her before. I, I, I had a conversation with my mama. Yeah. I told mom mm-hmm. before. I said, if I, if I get, if I get the opportunity, I might. You know, go ahead and get this or whatever birth control, whatever protection I need to be mm-hmm. on. I need you to talk to me about that. And my mom didn't have a conversation with me. She just laughed at me and thought I was joking. Like, ain't nobody studying you. But I'm like, I'm dead serious. And then when I did get on birth control, when she found out, I was like, well, how long does it take to kick in? Mm-hmm. But 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 thing about it is, if you have these conversations earlier on, or if your child is asking about these things earlier on, I think as moms, don't laugh it off, don't ignore it, yeah, handle it and take it very serious. When right they and, there. That, and that's and I say that all the time. When your children have the the mental capacity to understand, and you know they do because they're asking those questions, 100%. then that's when you need to have the conversation. Have it then. It ain't a time frame, but you know some people are like, oh, I'm not going to answer that. Oh, you're not. It's not the time. No, if they're asking, it's time. I was yeah. about to say, if they're asking, they're curious. And they you, know. It's better for them to get the answer from you than right. they look for from their little friends. I yeah. agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, that part was tragic. Anyways, did you say you're most disappointing? Oh, wait, well, that question was for me. No, yeah, that was her oh, question. Oh, yeah, my bad. I think we all asked her, I want to know. Did you actually want to know? Oh, did you ever? Oh, I, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I did the ringtone. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. That was boring compared to that one. That was funny. It was good. No, no this has good. been another great episode. Chi-Chi and Naisha, y'all let everybody know where they can follow y'all, what y'all got going on, anything y'all need them to check out. Um, Y'all can follow me at Leticia Marie Gardner on Instagram, Leticia Gardner on TikTok and Facebook. Um, I've always got something going on, detoxes, uh, beauty and wellness line. So it's super dope. So make sure you guys come check it out because... Yeah, she well, always it. look good. Yeah. <laughs> and she's, I love her page too because it's like so much family oriented, motivational content. So mm-hmm. just follow her for all of that. 100%. Naeja, where can they follow you at? Uh, y'all can follow me at the real Naeja C. Um, that's my Instagram. TikTok is going to be Naeja Clauston or Baddie Barbie. Really need to change that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm glad you look at that. You have to tell them. <laughs> As of right now, I have my own salon suites opening up soon and we'll start doing um Semi-permanent makeup, you know, just hit your girl up. And for facial. What's the name of it? Uh, Bareface Glow. Bareface yes. Glow. Oh, Wait, you, that. Is that the, you got an Instagram for Bareface Glow yet? Not yet. Okay. Not yet, but that's going to be the website. Okay. Barefaceglow.com. Check Cheer her up. out, y'all. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank both of you lovely ladies for joining us today. It has been a pleasure. Our first Thank mother-daughter you. duo. Absolutely. Yay. Absolutely. And so. we, we both see that we're not crazy. And yeah. Obviously. I, no, and we're, we're, not both see, we're, we're not crazy. crazy. We're not crazy. What's that TikTok sound? I see you, you see me. I see, see you. We you see, see each other. other. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in to this week's Mommy and Me episode. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and on Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast. We are there. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.